Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Saturday, Friday, excuse me, July 26th. And we got a lot of action as we head into this weekend. Huge weekend ahead. Got a big UFC card over there in London that goes off at 6 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Already released a 4% premium, lining up a possible 5% play as well. I think we're 6-1, and 7-1 and one so far this year in those. Can be crushing in MMA, number one in profit, ROI, all of that. So should continue tomorrow, but we're coming off a sucky day. I mean, we got crushed in pretty much everything we did in Major League Baseball. Listen, I tell you when I win, I tell you when I lose, and we're absolutely getting demolished in baseball. The only thing I can do is manage my risk as efficiently as possible and continue to grind. It's not the first time I've been doing this a very long time. I've been profitable since at least 2010. I've been documented profitable since at least 2015, and uh, over those years, I can promise you, this is not the first time I've had to go through something like this, um, especially when we bet 0.25 and we bet a lot of volume. You're going to have those fluctuations. So even when we're down, we got to be down 200 units just to have lost 50% of our starting capital. That's how you manage risk efficiently. And we're not even there. I mean, we're like not even to the 150 range. And it's been so horrific. It's been as bad as it gets. And this is one of those situations, just like when I'm running really hot like this and I talk about in the steam room, I can't sustain this. I can't sustain a 20% ROI and it's unsustainable, a negative 10, 20% ROI. I don't want to continue sounding like a broken record, but numbers don't lie. And long-term, I, I know what's going to happen. And same thing that happens each and every year. And more importantly, over each statistically significant sample size. So Again, you could follow, you could fade, or you can ignore. The only thing I can do is what's best for myself and for those whose goals are aligned with mine. Anyone that's a subscriber of mine, I make it perfectly clear that if your goals are not aligned with mine, I will disappoint you. If you need to win this bet today, this week, this month, then our goals are not aligned. I use sports betting as an investment vehicle, and I understand that investments take time. If you've ever watched uh, anything on compounding interest, what you will notice is whether you're getting 2%, 5%, 10%, 12% .10 over the first five to 10 years, there is no big difference. You do not see the difference as far as profit made. Let's say you start with $10,000. And you comp let it compound at 2%, 5%, 7%, 12%. First five, 10 years, you won't see much differences in those accounts. But after 10 years, you will start to see the ones getting the higher ROI just running away with it, running away with it. And that's what we do as that 0.5% that actually turns a profit betting sports long term. The groups that I work with, that's exactly what they do. They focus on that and they do not allow any short-term variance to affect them. In fact, you saw, they're not afraid to bet the White Sox. They're not afraid to bet the Washington Nationals. In fact, they're not afraid to bet them on the money line, the run line, money line first five, run line first five. If that's what the number reflects they should do, that's what they're going to do. There is no emotion to it. The, the risk is managed as efficiently as possible. So there's no loss of sleep over it. Nobody's happy when you're running cold and losing. Shit, I'm paying these guys. I lost through just one account over nine dimes yesterday. I'm not happy losing nine dimes. It's a lot of money. You know, people work all week, all month for nine dimes. What am I talking about? So, uh, you know, again, not to go long, but if your goal is to be in that half percent that wins long term, you better be able to overcome any kind of run like this. If this scares you, you're not built for it. This isn't an excuse. I've said this over and over and over again. I said it last year when we increased starting capital by 80%. And at one point we were down almost 50%. That's the variance that happens when your edge is small and you're looking for high ROI. So you need to fire volume. You're working with a low risk of ruin, so you sleep comfortable, but you know there will be fluctuations. 
And that's just the bottom line. So with that out of the way, I'm going to give you two bets today, two bets today, one side, one total. Let's start off. We're going to come back right back with the Toronto Blue Jays um, all the way up to minus 120. In fact, up to minus 125, I'd be comfortable. And here's why. This is the first time they're playing in 2024. So we don't have any recent history between the two. But what we do have is Texas coming in, having won five straight where Toronto's two and four since the break. So there's a little recency bias there. And uh, more importantly, you look at the pitch and matchup, Texas, Haney, zero earned runs in his last start. Come on. You expect some regression towards the mean, and his mean is not zero earned runs. It's just as simple as that. Now, granted, it doesn't have to happen in his very next game, but he will regress, that's for sure. And I think Toronto's just been getting a little bit unlucky, especially at home, when you look at runs scored and runs allowed. Again, another data point that will not play out in the short term, but we're certain it will play out in the long term. So Toronto here at home coming off that 13 nothing shutout loss yesterday. I think it's a good spot for a bounce back. And again, we laid up the minus 120, 125 on that. Now here's a total for you. We are going to fade the market and go over seven in Seattle and the White Sox. They just over adjusted too much and they, they should have adjusted. They did the right thing because I believe most of the recreational betters are going to bet this game under. Why? Because first half Seattle finished 14 games under as far as the total goes and the White Sox at least 10 games under as far as the total goes. So they've been under teams in the first half. You look at Seattle, seven of the last game, eight games went under. White Sox, six of the last seven games went under. You look at Kirby, one on run in his last start. You look at Thorpe, zero earned runs in his last start. You look at the series last time, two, one, and one towards the under. All oh, that under bias has been factored into the betting line. And it's caused it to be inefficient because they brought it down to seven. It should have been at least eight with the over favored. Why? Because the White Sox average over eight runs per game, the bigger sample size for 2024. And Seattle averages about seven and a half runs per game, a bigger sample size. So we're taking advantage of that recency bias on this total by going over the seven. In fact, I'm going to upgrade that and make it a 4% play. We like it like that. Boom. Upgraded it. Upgraded it. So 4%, that means 0.25 or 4%, 1% of bankroll. That's why... We remain in action and anyone over the last nine years that has bet alongside me should have profited eight of those because they managed risk efficiently and didn't have to re-up. That's the bottom line. Now, let's get to some of these questions. Uh, I'm, it's The, the viewership is going down. And listen, I expect that because I've been cold in Major League Baseball. So it's no surprise. Meaning if I had been like 20 and 10 over the last 30 free bets, picks, we'd probably have up viewership. Okay. Now, obviously this isn't going to continue. And like, I will regress and progress towards the mean when I'm running way, way, way too hot. I'll regress towards my mean because I'm not a 20% ROI guy. Nobody is, but I'm also not a negative 20% ROI guy. So I will progress towards my mean as well. You always got to keep that in mind. Um, but with football coming, I've already committed to um, doing an a awesome new show. We're going to be launching at Wager Talk with Kelly and uh, um, Superbook. Really cool shit. What do you see? I uh, committed to do a segment on uh, the weekly NFL college football, I believe. I have my commitments with the UFC. And contender series starts in August. Not sure I'll be involved with that, but I'll be betting it at the very least. So, and football starting, there's just a lot going on. So we're going to try to keep these going um, as long as possible. But, um, you know, it just seems the interest just may not be there. 
think people just want picks. I can just give a free, I think just free picks. No one wants the education. No one cares about the education. That's crazy. Um, what else are you going to say? Oh, we, tomorrow is the steam room. So we will not be having our YouTube. All right, let's keep grinding. Quick question on gold coins and bars. Is there a difference between the Buffalo coin or the Maple Leaf or the Eagle? Why so many different coins and why the difference in prices? Same with gold. How am I supposed to pick with gold? Greatest question, best question, best question, best question. Let me tell you, tell you a little something. All you want is 99.99% gold, 99.99% silver. Do not buy any collector coins. You're overpaying. And their appreciation is just not going to be worth it. All you need is gold. You need it to be 99.99% gold. Nobody's going to care if you need it, whether there's a needle on it, whether there's a maple leaf on it, whether it's a cougar hand. Just get what's most financially beneficial for you. Don't get talked into any of those commemorative coins collector coins, how this one's going to be worth all that. You just want the gold. You want the gold. For all you care, you want it to be melted down. So you don't care. Trust me. I promise you that. So yeah, just stick to just want whatever, it, whatever is on sale. But as long as it's gold, as long as it's the silver, you know, the 99.99999, pure, pure, pure. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Um, I got hustled early on like this, oh, collector coin. And it's nonsense. It's such nonsense. Just get gold, raw gold, raw gold. Okay, human nature, my man, Neil, got to answer him. Well, we go human nature being what it is. Do you ever find yourself questioning, doubting, or, or handicapping the groups you work with on what plays you release and how much to assign a bet side, especially during a losing period? Absolutely, Neil. Every time, every time. Uh, and so what I got to do is I, I force myself to zoom out, to zoom out so I trust these guys and I trust myself. And I force myself not to change what I'm doing, not to change what I'm doing because you can't allow the short term to have more impact than it should. And when I put it into the long term, it's not as significant. Here's what I mean. Even if we bet have at the end baseball, let's say we're we're down now 100 units. Say we're down 200 units in baseball and we've given 600 bets out for that to happen. When you put that into the last two years, last three years, last five years, last 10 years, it doesn't, you, it disappears. Meaning if you put it into the last 10 years, it's definitely going to disappear because if we're making, you know, 700 baseball plays per year, that's going to be 7,000 over 10 years. If you fit in 500 of them, 600 of them in that 7,000, it will not affect it all that much. It's not even 10%. Of the 7,000, it's less than that. It's like 8%, right? 7%. So it's going to have a very small effect on the big number. That's how you have to approach it if you plan on betting long term, if you plan on using this market as an investment vehicle, like these guys do, because they know in that time it's, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. But as long as it's constantly going up, that's what matters. In the short term, you're going to have volatility. But as long as when you zoom out, the trajectory is upwards, then you're doing the right thing and you're continuing to find e plus EV spots. It's almost like Bitcoin. You guys know that long term, I'm a huge believer of Bitcoin. Huge believer. Um, but let's look at it. Let's look at it as an asset. In January of 2020, it was 6,000. In May of 2021, so 18 months later, it's 60,000. So it went up almost 10x. And then it dropped from May 
down to July in two months. It dropped to 30,000. So it dropped 50% 30 in, in, in two months. And then it went back to 68 by December 2021. And then it dropped all the way down to 16 by what? Remember that? 2022, the fall of 2022. And now it's back up to 67. Here's what I mean. Those, here's what I'm getting at. Those people that bought, that were buying at 6,000, 7,000, that saw it go up to 60, didn't do anything about it. Saw it drop to 30, didn't do anything about it. Saw it go up to 60 again, didn't do anything about it. Saw it drop down to 16, didn't do nothing about it. Now saw it climb back up to 70, didn't do nothing about it. Now it dropped down to 64, where it sits today, 66, 67, not doing anything about it. What's changed for them? It, they went through the volatility. They believed in the asset. And the people that got in, like I said, in 2020, four years later, it's now up 10x for them. Having gone through all of that, through all of that, because that's time in the market, not timing the market. Those who tried to time Bitcoin lost more Bitcoin than they could have had. Those that tried to time the top and time the bottom, they, what did they end up doing? How much Bitcoin do they have? Guys like me who instead said, you know what? I can't, I can't determine that. I am not, I'm not a psychic. I'm just going to buy on pullbacks. That's it. Whenever it has a spike of 10%, I'm going to buy this much. Whenever it has a, a, a 20%, I'm going to buy this much. Whenever it drops 30%, I'm going to drop by this much. Whenever it drops 40, 50, I'm going to buy this much. And that's what I did. And I keep it in that cold storage. And I feel confident that anytime I bought, I bought when it was undervalued. And when I zoom out, I noticed that my average uh, price for Bitcoin is a lot, 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 lot lower than the current price. Now, again, I believe it's coming down. I think it's coming down. I think we're going to see 60 next and possibly 50 right after that. Because when the uh, S&P crashes and the Qs crash, dude, trust me, Bitcoin is going to crash too. Crypto market is going to go first, follow right th after them. Um, believe me when I tell you, it's still a risk asset. No, they're not. People are not going to hold when the S and P crashes and the Qs crash, and that's going to happen when we hit the recession and they officially announce it. Um, but that's not making me sell what I have in cold storage because that I'm using for I'm in for the long term. I trust in the project. I I know what I'm invested in, and I'm going to continue to hold. No, I tr believing it's going to come down. It's going to go up. It's going to come down. It's going to go up. But I'm looking at what is it going to be worth in 2030, 2035. That's what I'm invested in. And if you're partnered with me, I want you to look at it like that. Where am I going to be in 2025, 2026, 2027 if I'm riding with Ace? Because Ace started at 100 to 500. Now I'm at 1,000 to 5,000. I did it just like Bitcoin, just like that. With ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs, ups and downs. But I compounded. No reason you can't do the same. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. All right. Let me see if we could pick anything, any. You're very welcome. So many guys. You guys are awesome. I could good question, Kyle. Is there a better time to bet dogs, favorites? It changes. It changes. Like those kind of trends just don't last. Just don't last because markets constantly are correcting themselves. They're becoming more efficient, less efficient at times. So as far as the dogs and favorites go, there just isn't like there's those months you should be looking at more dogs or more favorites. And here's a perfect example to show that. If you look over the last 5,000 NFL games, last 5,000, 
I can guarantee you that you are going to be with, within a, a few percentage points of 50-50. Like they're going to have 2,500 favorites, 2,500 dogs. It'll be close to that to where even if you bet all favorites or all dogs, you couldn't have made money. Meaning with the juice added in with the, you know, 11 to win 10, no matter which you picked, you're down money, favorites or all dogs. And if you check the over-unders, it's going to be the exact same thing. You're going to come to close to 2,500 overs, 2,500 unders. That's the law of big on numbers. And that's how efficient most of these betting markets are. That's what happens in the long term. And that's how books are able to constantly print money in month after month and why they almost never have a losing month um, because they're constantly able to do that. And uh, yeah, that's where it's at, my man. That's where it's at, where you just can't, can't pick like that, where they're looking to either balance the money, which is almost impossible. Like you can't get everyone split down the middle. On some games you can, but on most you can't. The majority you can't. People are usually one-sided, if anything. Um, or you got to split the result where team A wins 50% of the time and team B wins 50% of the time at this number. If you can do that and you split the result, lane 11 to win 10, you're guaranteed a profit. They're much better at splitting the result than splitting the money. And that's why you see when you go back and look at the big numbers, 5,000 NFL bets, you're going to see 2,500 favorites, 2,500 dogs, 2,500 overs, 2,500 unders. That's how good they are. Love you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the games. Smash that like button if you please. Throw a comment. Ask some questions. Jess wasn't here today, so she didn't print out any of the questions for me. I was kind of just flying blind um, and just grabbed one or two from here. Hopefully, we're able to get some winners in before we move to Saturday's big action. A lot of MMA coming your way. I only put in one play so far, and I got like five or six at least that'll probably go in there tonight. So that's Texas and Toronto. We're taking the Toronto Blue Jays. And then we're also going over seven, Seattle and the White Sox.